Hello everyone! If this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome! My name is Emily and today I am bringing you another spooky Sunday. Let's get into that here. So if you are familiar with my channel, then I'm sure that you know that every Saturday I typically put up two videos. I put up a makeup video and then I tried to put up a spooky Saturday video as well. And I found that putting up a spooky Saturday video along with a makeup video has really kind of made Saturdays difficult for me because I end up filming all day. Typically filming takes me anywhere from an hour to two hours depending on how many videos I do. And then I end up editing those videos and uploading and rendering and it's just a giant jumbled mess that I do every single Saturday. So I've basically hindered myself from being able to go out on Saturdays. And let's face it, I don't leave the house very often, but I wanna have the option to. So for the most part, I'm gonna still do spooky Saturdays, but it might be on Sundays now. They're gonna be spooky Saturdays or spooky Sundays. So I'm just kind of changing the title of this series from spooky Saturday to spooky Saturday or Spooky Sunday. So I will either upload a spooky video on Saturday or I will upload a spooky video on Sunday, but it's still gonna come on the weekend. And typically I do put these on my channel a little bit later in the day because I think spooky stories are cooler at nighttime. But with that being said, today's Spooky Sunday is going to be all about the Flannan Isles mystery. So what is the Flannan Isle mystery? Well, essentially three men disappeared off of a very small island which is off of the coast of Ireland which is called Flannan Isle and this island is tiny like minuscule tiny and as you can see there is a very very small little tiny microscopic speck that is on top of this little tiny isle and that is the Flannan Lighthouse and as you can see there is nothing else on the island except for the little lighthouse. This lighthouse was constructed in the late 1800s and was finished being constructed in 1899. So this is a very old story that we are talking about here. Now this was before the time periods that we have nowadays where lighthouses don't need to be manned by actual physical people. We can basically just program them to turn their lights on as soon as the sun goes down. But back in the day, you had to have anywhere from three to four men in a lighthouse to get everything to operate smoothly so that the passing ships would have some light to guide their way. After this lighthouse was constructed, it was immediately manned by three different men. Thomas Marshall, James Ducott, and Donald MacArthur were the three men to man the lighthouse. They were the lighthouse watchers and keepers. Well, after only a few months of being at the lighthouse, they randomly disappeared out of nowhere. A passing steamliner by the name of Arctur on December 15th of the year 1900 happened to be passing by and noticed that the light was not on and that the three men were not doing their jobs by manning the lighthouse. And this concerned the crew members of the passing steamliner because the men were known to always be there. They literally had one job. <laughs> and the three men being the lighthouse watchers meant that they had to basically stay there while they were doing their jobs. They had to stay the night inside of the lighthouse. That was a part of the job description. So the fact that no one had turned the light on was very concerning because it's not like they really had many places to go. This wasn't exactly the biggest island in the world and there wasn't exactly a Walmart on this island or anything that they could run off to. There was literally just them, a bunch of rocks, a little pathway that had been made for the lighthouse and the lighthouse itself. So there was nowhere to really go. And then they did have a boat that was tied up to some of the surrounding rocks of the isle, but the boat looked to be untouched and it was still in its original position. So the steamliner went back and let everyone know in the area that the lighthouse men were not doing their jobs and that someone needed to really check up on them and make sure that they were okay, and if they were okay, why the hell were they not lighting the lighthouse? 
a boat by the name of Hersperus decided to set out on a little voyage to make sure that the men were okay. They originally wanted to leave for the destination of Flannan Isle on December 20th of 1900, but due to poor weather conditions, they weren't able to get to the Isle itself until December 26th, which was already 11 days after the very first steamliner noticed that there was something weird going on. Once the Hersperus got to the Isle, they immediately noticed some strange occurrences happening. Not only was everything barren and empty because it seemed like no one was there, but they noticed that the flag on the flagstaff was gone. Jim Harvey, the captain of the Hersperus, blew out his whistle to see if the men would come outside to see them, but no one came outside. Jim and his crew went inside the lighthouse and looked around to see where the heck these men were. Like I said earlier, it's not like they really had a whole lot of places to go, especially while their boat was still tied up to their isle. What are they gonna do? Swim? It was the ocean, and it was a very kind of dangerous part of Scotland where there was a lot of waves always crashing up against the isle, and it would basically be impossible to swim away from there because of how dangerous the elements in the area were. Jim and his men went inside the lighthouse and began looking around for the three missing men, but found no trace of them. Everything looked as if it had been untouched. The way they described the scene was that it looked like the men had woken up, had started getting ready for the day, and had just vanished. Their beds were unmade, the kitchen still had food in it, as if the men were about to eat breakfast or dinner or eat a meal of some sorts, and the only odd occurrence was that one chair was flipped upside down. Everything else looked completely untouched. After a while of searching, Jim Harvey and his crew needed to go back to shore, but the relief keeper Joseph Amore and three other men decided to stick around for a while and stay the night at the lighthouse to see if the men had gone somewhere and to see if they would come back. Upon staying in the lighthouse, Joseph Moore noticed that all of the clocks in the lighthouse had all stopped at the same time. So none of them worked and they were all stopped at the same time, which was very, very bizarre. He also noted that there was some oil lamps that the men would use if they needed to go outside during the middle of the night and they were filled and basically ready to be used. There was also a log book that was found of the lightkeeper's days stayed in the lighthouse and had notes in the log saying that during the past couple of weeks at the aisle, the weather had been extremely bad, more so than usual. After staying in the lighthouse for a while, Joseph Moore and his men needed to go back to the Hersperus and the crew, but they left a telegram to Captain Harvey on December 26 of 1900 stating, a dreadful accident has happened at the Flannans. The three keepers, Ducat, Marshall, and the Occasional, have disappeared from the island. The clock stopped and other signs indicated that the accident must have happened about a week ago. Poor fellows, they must have been blown over the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane. So essentially what Joseph Moore thinks is that the men had gone outside to try and secure the boat during one of these storms during the nighttime. Obviously there was logs and proof that the weather had not been the best in that area and they had a very small boat that was just kind of mediocrely tied up to the aisle and the rocks. So it would make sense for the men to go outside. But in this area, the worst of the storms happen during the nighttime when it's really cold, when it's really dark out. And if this were to have happened during the nighttime, which we can kind of assume that maybe it did, but not really, it could have happened during the day as well but it would be more probable that it would happen during the nighttime. We would assume that the men would take the oil lamps outside, which would make sense why they were filled and ready to use, but why were the oil lamps inside if the men were to go outside and secure the boat? Even if they had ran outside in a panic that the boat was going to essentially wash away, there was three different men. One of them could have gone back inside and gotten the lamps while two of them held down the boat. There was no evidence that the oil lamps had even been touched by the men or had been moved out of place and they were not in any weird, out of ordinary spot in the house. So there's already something sketchy going on with that situation. Now, they definitely could have been washed away by these waves that were happening in the area. Now, the weather was really bad, like I was saying earlier, but something about the oil lamps being untouched kind of resonates with me weird because these were experienced seamen. Seamen. I'm sorry. I have to feel weird about saying that, but these, 
These were experienced seamen. <laughs> Get it together, girl. <laughs> These were experienced seamen, and they had had experience with this type of situation before, but they had already been on the aisle for several months before all of this happened, and I'm sure that they had training when it comes to what to do if there is bad weather. You would probably want to stay inside, and if the boat washes away, the boat washes away. You send a nice little telegram to the nearest island or the nearest city and whatnot, and they'll come bring you another boat, or they'll come rescue you. You want to stay put. You don't want to go outside. And maybe a normal civilian such as myself would think to go outside and try to save the boat if there was bad weather and my boat was about to be washed away, but for trained, experienced lighthouse keepers, they would probably know to stay inside and just let the damn thing wash away. You can always get another one. So something that is weird to me is that the clocks all stopped at the same time and that it seemed like everything was just untouched. Now, if there was some sort of distress or panic happening here at this island and at this lighthouse, there would be some sort of sign of distress. Now, granted, there is a very small sign of distress, which is that chair that was flipped over, but everything else was a-okay. And there was three men. We're not just talking one man here. We are talking three different men that disappeared. And you think that there would be more evidence to a struggle or some sort of disaster that happened. So this is going to lead right into the crazier conspiracy of what happened to them. And you know that you are on my channel and that you are at the spooky weekend that I do every single weekend if we are talking about aliens, because I'm always talking about aliens here on this channel. So you knew it was coming. So people think that maybe these men were abducted by aliens and something that might back this up is the fact that the clock stopped. Now you could chalk it up to the lighthouse being hit by lightning or maybe the storms that were going on, maybe some thunder had hit the lighthouse, but there was nothing on the lighthouse to indicate that it had been hit. And I'm sure you're aware, but if something is hit by lightning, there will be a burn mark proving that it had been hit by lightning. Lightning doesn't just strike and leave no evidence. Same with storms and thunder and whatnot, but there was no evidence or signs of anything hitting the lighthouse, anything electrical happening that would cause these clocks to stop. Another fact that might add to the idea that these men met a paranormal demise is that apparently during the construction of the aisle and during the construction of the lighthouse, there was a lot of history about the aisle before it had even been worked on. Now, the locals in the area and people who had been to the aisle had said that the aisle was bad luck and that if you stayed the night there, you were definitely going to get some bad luck. There was just an altogether bad vibe about the aisle that apparently all the locals knew about and people had first-handedly experienced before being on the aisle and they built on top of it anyway. So this to me kind of reminds me of a bunch of stories that I've heard about different parts of the world and different small little secluded areas of the world that the local natives to the land have warned people about, about not building on top of it, not going to it, just leaving that piece of nature alone because something's going on there, something that we don't understand as humans because let's face it, humans don't understand everything, okay? They just don't. There are many stories of places in the world that we are just not really supposed to mess with and that humans aren't really supposed to come to and destroy essentially and typically bad things will happen to the people that do kind of mess with this natural part of the world. And I don't know what that is. I don't think anyone really knows what that is. I know that in some cultures in different parts of the world, they know about different spirits and different maybe gods and entities and whatnot that protect the land, supposedly. And when humans come and just mess up the land and take it over, the spirits and the gods or whatever paranormal entity it might be tend to get back at whoever came to essentially mess up their home. So this may be another situation involving that type of scenario. And there's no proof to this, but it's definitely just a theory. And it's the theory that I personally like to believe. I mean, let's be honest here, the poor men probably did get swept away by waves and whatnot. But I like to think that this might be the theory because I think it's interesting. And I think that there are some parts of the world that we just should not mess with because the world was here first, okay? Nature was here from the start. 
and humans come in and you know we live here and we do our thing but sometimes it gets to be too much and gets to be overkill and we start taking over things that we just shouldn't you know i mean we're humans and we live with the world we are not the center of the world so just the fact that this land was known to be kind of an area like this and the fact that these men did meet some sort of very questionable and mysterious demise is very interesting and is it really a coincidence i don't know now these three men have been searched for many many times in the area and you think that there would be some sort of evidence that the three men were washed away and that the three men might be in the ocean somewhere maybe one of their bodies would show up or maybe just a piece of their bodies might show up but nothing has been found in the 118 years that they have been talked about and looked for nothing has been found not even a shred of evidence and it's been so long now that maybe it's all gone but people were really looking for these men and there wasn't even a single clue of what happened to them so that's another aspect of the situation that kind of edges me a little bit more towards the paranormal version of this story because typically when one person disappears it's kind of easy if you will to make one person disappear but when there's three of them, there has to be some sort of evidence, some sort of clue, even if it's like the tiniest clue or piece of evidence ever. There has to be something left behind because that is three humans that are just poof, gone. So I don't really know what that's all about, but I guess it's just up to speculation for now because it has been 118 years since this happened and we are not any closer to figuring out what happened to these three poor lighthouse keepers than we were in 1900. But with that, guys, that is going to be wrapping up this week's Spooky Sunday. I hope you enjoyed the story, and what do you think about it? Do you think that these guys were just washed away by the waves? I think, honestly, probably. They probably were. But personally, for me, I like to play in to the idea that maybe something paranormal happened to them. I guess we'll really never know. I do hope that you consider subscribing. I am doing Spooky Sunday or Spooky Saturday every single week. So you can count on a spooky video every single weekend. And if you are into makeup videos, I have all sorts of those for you here on this channel. So if you have not already and you would like to, I would love to see you hit that button down below. I hope you are having an absolutely awesome day wherever you are. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye.